Well, today's kind of a fun day. So uh, I'm gonna put the new brake linings on this uh, brake band for this Farmall B. And I picked up a uh, brake lining installation tool probably 40 years ago. About 10, 10 years ago, I restored it. I basically just used the wire brush on it. But today I get to put some brake linings on with it. This is the first time I've ever used this tool for brake lining after 30 years. So never throw away a good tool. First thing I did is I ordered this brake lining material, it's 3 16 material. Uh, I bought it in a four foot length and I have about a foot left over. And um, what I did is I came in here and I, first I just measured these things. So I, I formed this up in the inside of this band, um, like so and I got the measurement for it. There we go. It's an inch and three quarters, so it fits just about right. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark all these holes so that I can get a drill hole so that I can effectively use the little countersinking tool that's on this fancy brake drum lining tool. So with this, I'm gonna mark these and uh, I think I'm gonna I probably just use a pencil here. Yeah, that's gonna do it. I may actually drill them in the band. That's probably the best way to get them exactly where the holes are. So I'm gonna get a clamp here so I can hold it and a drill set up and I'm gonna drill all these holes through in this band. So what I've done is I got me a, a 5 30 seconds drill bit and I've put this band in here and I've clamped it and I'm just drilling these holes through the lining so that I'll know where to put the countersink. I'm gonna walk all the way around this, this uh, band and get all the holes drilled first. All right, now that I've got all these holes drilled in through here, clamped in where it's nice and tight, now we're gonna take these clamps off, we're gonna remove the lining, and we're gonna go drill countersink holes for the rivets on the inside of the lining. So I'm gonna set up at the, at the uh, brake lining tool for this next step. This is a, uh, a Barrett brake lining tool, and I believe it is at least back in the 40s, maybe even the 30s. Um, could have come out of a, a Model A Ford plant. Um, K.R. Wilson made most of their tools back then, but, but this could have come otherwise. So this tool is pretty fancy. It's got a foot, foot lever that drives the riveting tool, and these are interchangeable. This is a brushing tool to clean up the, the brake pads, brake shoes, and this is a sand belt that when you put it on a brake shoe, you can push it through here and it will arc grind the, the, the lining to fit the, the drum. And this is a fancy, fancy, fancy thing here that counter bores the, uh, the rivet head so it sits up in that fiber. And I've set the depth. <laughs> I didn't realize it's got this little locating pin right here that tells you where to locate the, the shoe, but I went ahead and pre-drilled them all. So I'm gonna just push that out of the way. And the way this thing works, I just got a socket here, is, is I'm, shit. Except my fancy schmancy snap-on tool is not magnetic, so it drops the shit out every time I use it. Um, but we'll put it on the inside of the curvature. And then you drop it down on there and when you push down the plate goes down and it recesses the drum recesses the rivet right there so that one needs to go down just a little bit more and there you have it perfect so we're going to do each of these So this thing has a spring loader deal that it pushes down and I set the depth of the blade so that it hits the stop. So what that did is came in here and, and counter drilled, counter sunk all of these little rivet holes that I'll now put on the band. So I cleaned out So I 
So I went through and I cleaned out all these holes just because it's fibrous. So I put, put all these on the holes. I'm kind of doing this backwards. And I took off the tray because this is normally made for a brake shoe to go on the top. Since this is going underneath, I took off the tray so that I could film it better. And when you get it centered up, this is a little rivet tool. And you press down on it. It's kind of hard to do it on the side. Um, so once I get it set up, down on the deal, I'll push the rivet tool down. And, and here's how it works from the front. Just get it seated down on there good. Perfect crimp every time. From the front, it's got the triangle leg, so it works a lot better. Okay, there you have it. Got the ends back on it. Got all these rivets in there. All these rivets, I don't know if you can see these, but they all have a really nice, good bend to them. Rivets countersunk in there. So this baby's ready to go back on the, back on the tractor. And uh, by way of a little uh, bonus here, in case you're wondering, why does that fool have a machine for 30 years that he's used once? I also have my very first wrench. So I acquired this wrench back when I was about eight years old because this was the socket to use to get the front nut off of bicycle tires that I was constantly fixing flats on. So this very fancy Wizard model H2288 half inch box in I've had for 55 years. Well, I hope you learned something today. Um, if you did, consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to ring that bell so you get notification of future videos that will be equally as exciting as the one you just watched. Now, before you go, give me a thumbs up on the video and drop a comment in the comment box if you got any kinds of questions or just think you got to sound off on something. If you have something specific you want to know how to do, well, leave me a comment and I'll see if I can't capture some content for a future video. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you back here for another Resto Rat episode real soon. Download the Resto Rat app today to begin managing, tracking, and documenting your restoration project.